Welcome to BizTech's Health and Wellness Show, where we focus on equipping you with the knowledge on health and wellness to help you to ensure a more productive and healthy life for yourself, your families, and your employees. Today, the conversation is about addressing mental wellness digitally. Now, to bring insights, we have the co-founder and CEO of Intellect, Theodoric Chu. Now, Intellect has been one of the most extensive networks of local providers and mental health practitioners in Asia, covering 12 countries and 11 languages. Now, welcome to the show, Theodoric. I'm Brian. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, let's start by giving us an overview of what Intellect does and also a little bit about your history. Sure. I mean, I'll start with myself. So my name is Theodoric. I am the co-founder and CEO of Intellect. And myself, I have someone that has been a tech space for a number of years now, um, growing startups. But more importantly, right now, we're building Intellect, which is a mental health care company for Asia. We serve employers, insurers, brokers to support workforces as a mental health benefit. So as of today itself, we do one key thing, which is support workforces in this trying time. Right? COVID has been a huge impact in many, many ways of changing how we live and how we work. Um, a lot of different things has happened. We have gone from being in office five days a week, uh, now to being uh, virtual, remote, um, anywhere in the world as well. So what we do is this, right? We help companies take care of their employees' well-being in this very trying time in a way that's proactive, right? There are traditional methods that are fantastic. They help people in crisis. Uh, we start early. We believe that mental health should be in the earliest phases and not only um, seen when there's a clinical need involved. Okay, Theodoric, I want to zoom in on that because and, and, and you're spot on in terms of COVID-19 has an impact on mental health in a couple of ways. On one hand, on the individual, you suddenly see all these stresses. Mm -hmm. On the other hand of the perspective, you see employers realizing for the first time, especially in Asia, that, hey, this is something that we need to deal with. Uh, because you know traditionally, we are an Asian society. Uh, mental health is something you sweep under the carpet. Mm -hmm. That's right. So what, what do you think that uh, uh, in terms of, uh, and, and you're based in Singapore primarily, what then inspired you to start this? Did you see this already happening? Are you a little bit ahead of the curve because you started in April, 2020? Yeah, that's a great question, right? So, so I think you're right. So we are headquartered in Singapore, but we serve Asia at large. So we have, as you mentioned earlier, 11 languages, um, coaches, councils across 12 countries in APEC itself. Um, as to why I started Intellect, um, we started actually back in mid of 2019. We went live after a good amount of time R and D, um, developing, testing if, with um, a product um, in beta and alpha as well. The key thing is this, right? Um, for me, I've been through the journey of mental health myself, right? I've been through the mental health system. I had anxiety as a uh, teenager, went through panic attacks, and saw firsthand going through and, and seeing therapy how it helped me cope. But along the years as well not just coping, but actually helping me do better in life in terms of how I live my day-to-day -day life, the ups and downs in general. So it starts really from its core of, of having been through the system, seeing how it helps me, and seeing along the trends of the macro, uh, macro level, right? How many, um, how so many Asians in, in the region struggle, but do not know where to turn to. So I'll bring back to the point you mentioned earlier, Brian. Um, historically, Asia is quite a stigmatized, um, has a stigmatized view towards mental health. That's, that, that's something that's quite true. Right. Um, if you ask different demographics, they may think of things like it's um, very, very clinical in nature. It's severe depression, panic attacks, trauma, schizophrenia. And these are things that I mentioned that are really important to solve for, but not what the majority of employees, people, your peers can relate to or may want to acknowledge in that sense. Right. The truth is everyone struggles in some form. Some people struggle with stress, more stress. Some people may just struggle with relationships in different ways. Right. So we believe that mental health needs to be taken out of a bucket of clinical care only. Not just that, but it applies to every facet of our lives, right? Your personal lives, your work lives, your relationships as well. Yeah, and so one of the things that is often ignored is the fact that, so this is in the past, but obviously that awareness level has changed now. Among employers, there wasn't the awareness that the, the fact that their employees were going through mental health issues has actually a severe impact on the bottom line. Because essentially, either they are not fully productive or they are not engaged in their job. So depending on the severity of mental health issues, either they're not engaged with, within the workforce or they can't perform. So 
these are some of the things where it actually impacts them in dollars and cents. Um, and it's something that they never realized. I think many employers kind of never realized until COVID hit us. You're now, right. What are, what are the barriers for care? Like, so you've gone through this whole care perspective. How did you, and, and so obviously you've turned out really well, but the outcomes are not always that way. Now, can you kind of uh, walk us through um, a little bit about your product and how you address that on a consumer level as well as an employer uh, perspective level? That's a great question, Brian. So I'll break it into two parts, right? You're right. So starting from our company and what our product is, we offer a mental health solution, a mental health benefit for workforces at large. We work with companies, so it's two products. Our business product where we serve corporate clients, enterprise clients, I'll share it in a second, and our consumer facing platform for individuals. The core business of what we do is actually supporting workforces, um, small, medium, large companies, anywhere from 50 headcount towards 10,000 employees across the region to easily and scalably care for the people with our mental health platform. So we provide them a simple end-to-end -end mental health system in an app in a digital easy manner, which comprises of three key things, right? Self-guided tools, live coaching, and clinical therapy within an app. So really conveniently within seconds, people can get access anywhere they are in Asia to a local native professional for mental health, um, wherever they are as well. So this helps a lot in terms of how mental health has been traditionally tackled by, by companies, right? Um, for the most part, there's something called EAPs um, for, for the listeners out there who know what it is that basically stands for Employee Assistance Programs. Yeah, These are the yeah. traditional means of um, mental wellbeing support. It's typically more catered towards crisis care. It's literally a crisis helpline in most cases. So it's really good safety net in that sense. But what we saw and what we've understood is that many employees do not want to use such a solution for a few of number of reasons, right? It's um, very closely linked towards crisis. People may not want to acknowledge that they need support. They may fear being judged. They may fear being um, having the performance review being affected if they are seen as having struggles. So what we're trying to build is something that's not crisis only, right? But really addressing the broader population of people that have day-to-day -day struggles. Um, so that's a product. It's a simple but comprehensive mental health platform that caters towards end-to-end -end care. Okay, to your, so, yeah. so Derek, one of the things that I, I want you to explain so that people can understand and get their heads around it. Now, because then an employer subscribes to under the employee assistance program, they, they, they offer it to an employee, which means they subscribe. There is a multi-user subscription, so all the employees have that. The key advantage of that is actually the following, obviously. Can you then explain how the self-help works? I'm in trouble. I'm afraid to go to work because I'm stressed. My boss screams at me. My performance is dropping dramatically, and I know it. I'm a top performer. I, I'm, I've got anxiety attacks. So walk us through how the, help, how the app will help me. That's a great question. So I'll, I'll take a step back, right? When we work with a company, for example, we work with companies, let's say uh, a tech company that has a thousand headcount in, in the region. What happens is that they purchase it for all the employees um, and every single employee gets access to their own personal app with access towards, I'll share in a second, live professionals and self-guided tools. In a case that you just brought an example there, when someone is struggling with anxiety, uh, they may not want to stand out and say, got a HR that, hey, hey, Brian, I'm, I'm struggling. Where do I turn to? Again, for a number of reasons, stigma, fear of being judged, number of things. So what they now have is this personal app on their phone with full access to it. Number one, um, consults with mental health professionals. We have counselors on board, we have coaches on board, we've got psychologists on board, right? That's number one. They can self-select and they can, we will guide them through a, uh, a, a screening process and a, and, a, and a matching process to the right professionals that suit the level of need. Not everyone needs a psychologist. Some people need counselors, some people need coaches. So based on what their needs are, they match it to the right professional who can support them. That's number one. They can access their, prof yeah, their coaches, their counselors through the app and live video consults, through 24-7 text messaging with a real actual person, right? So that's important because you're not talking to a bot, they're not talking to an AI element kind of thing. And there's a real human connection with, with someone in that sense. So that is with the life element. What we often lay on top of the telehealth piece of connecting employees with live professionals it's actually the self-guided tools. We have programs in place designed by our in-house psychologists that caters towards helping people cope and develop themselves in a self-serve manner. So these are mini bite-sized sessions in the app 
five minutes or so, plus minus some, they caters to the range of needs as well. Okay, so Theodoric, actually one of the things that we should also keep in mind, uh, given the research that I've done for this interview and uh, understanding your solutions, actually that employee assistance program is not only crisis, but it's also to then improve individual performances. If you're a, an employee that says, hey, um, you know, there are certain things, for example, people don't realize they have ADD. Yep. Okay, how do you then take care of that? So I say, okay, let me just go on the app. I have some coaching, I have some sessions. I improve my performance because I learn to deal with myself better. So that's actually the positive aspect that a lot of times people don't talk about when they refer to an app like yours. That's right. So I'll say you got it right exactly, Brian. So what's for gonna and links back to the point you made earlier, which is how actually mental well-being and mental health employees really closely correlates towards the bottom line of the business. And why is this as such, right? People are the core of any organization, right? And they may see it, but if it's not hard to connect the dots, if your people don't feel well, they don't think or they don't feel what they don't do well, right? They feel less motivated, they have less morale lower productivity, low outputs. More people are ill, more people are sick, and that leads to us different costs and less productive for the company. What we believe is this, right? Mental health needs to be proactive. People need to be at the pink of their mental health, not just physically, but mentally as well. So you don't have to wait till people are burnout or, or struggling to get support. It should always be an arrangement by just like how we exercise, we go to the gym, we have diets. What's the equivalent for mental health? It's what we're trying to bring into place as well. We have um, support for the doctors, just like how you see a physical doctor, but that's one element of it's, it's when we find a problem. But before that, we should keep thinking about how can we correlate and uh, keep people in, in a healthier state. And that will lead towards better outcomes and less people leaving the company, people feeling higher in morale, more motivated, and getting more stuff done productively as well. So that's a net positive for a company if their people are well taken care of, not just financially through compensation, but also through taking care of their psychological safety and mental well being. Yeah, and again, it's all about balance, isn't it? So at the end of the day, when we have balance, we are happy, we are productive. Now, here's one problem that I see that many people will have, and, and, and you've got to tell us whether this you address this. People have big concerns about data confidentiality. Um, that's, uh, you know, I'm sharing, I'm, I'm going through struggles. I'm sharing all this information with my company, and, and how do you protect my, my data? That's, that's a great question. So this is one key piece, right? Data privacy of employees that we take very, very seriously. So we do multiple things in this front. First and foremost, I'll start with the level of encryption that we do. In, in, in encryption at the center, I'll keep it more layman in, in terms of right? encryption is how we secure and protect uh, data. So we use the most secure level of encryption, not the standard um, level. We use something called zero knowledge encryption. In very simple term, it means that the data that's input from the employee into the app, their conversations, their records with the uh, their coaches, the counselors, or their records in the app, it's never accessible by anyone other than their own devices. That's the extent of zero knowledge encryption. So not the employers, not us can actually access their inputs, their records, their messages. It's solely on the, the employee's device. That's number one. Number two, it's this, right? Any, we are compliant with all the key regulations for data privacy or HIPAA, your ISO, GDPR, PDP. These are key things that large companies want and need, and we assure them that those things are covered. But that's one of the hygiene checklists, right? The key thing is this. Any reports and data that's insights that are shared are always aggregated, anonymized, and never personally unifiable to an individual employee. And those are key things that protect people, gives them access, but also shares insights for employees as to what trends are in the company. So, so key thing is, this is literally like actuarial data. It is blinded data. It essentially has uh, uh, aggregated amounts which no individual can be pinpointed. Exactly. It okay. has to be safe for them to do, to want to feel like they could use it without being judged. Absolutely. Now, let me ask you, you've got execution, you have to execute, you need partners for that. From a clinical perspective as well, you need clinical partners for research and partnerships. Tell us who do you work with? Yeah, that's, that's a great point. So we invest a lot of science and research. First and foremost, we have our own in-house clinical team of psychologists, researchers, experts that design, develop, and drive studies for what we do as well. So that's, that's number one. The next key thing is that we extensively collaborate with uh, clinical advisors, research institutions, universities to drive studies that further the space of digital mental health in Asia. To give some, some examples, uh, we work with NUS uh, to, to run multiple studies on efficacy 
of okay, so that's National University of Singapore. Exactly, yes. that's right. Okay. I work at King's College London. We work at hospitals like SGH in Singapore, the Singapore General Hospital, and the list goes on, right? We work with local and regional partners in the region to understand and drive advancements towards um, how digital mental health programs could help people. And what we're seeing is quite simple, right? And it's straightforward. We do they have strong statistical, statistically significant data that show cases that our programs actually help people improve and decrease stress, anxiety, and improve overall well-being in the span of six weeks. The results we have are on par. Um, are really close or on par to face-to-face -face therapy in some extent. So that's something that we're really proud of and, and quite excited about as well. Okay, so you saw that clinical data has improved outcomes, but you know, here's the thing. So let me ask you this, all technology companies tell us that. What empirical evidence do you have that you've seen from your users, both individual and corporates, that you can share with us in terms of, of symptom improvements as well as adoption rates because people you have technologies companies buy stuff all the time nobody uses them yeah that's a great question so you're right i'll, I'll split it in two parts right how do we ensure that the reports results we're giving are accurate and how do we measure success for the partners we work with right so first and foremost any measure that we utilize to measure anxiety stress depression and well-being are the same standardized clinical measures that psychologists use in clinics We've embedded that into our own app in the same standardized way. So we're not using our own measures. These are the same measures that um, psychologists, psychiatrists use to gauge well-being levels in a standardized way. So it's part one. So any data that we get are, in a way, quite standardized and, and, and being evidence-based in that sense. Number two, it's this. How do we make sure that for companies there is success in terms of improving your people and workforce, that their investment in mental health for the employees actually pays off for them, right? Two things happen, right? Number one is adoption and utilization. Yep. making sure that it's utilized. Number two, it's showing trends of well-being improvements in the people. So now first and foremost with adoption, um, we make sure that we have much, much higher utilization rates than traditional EEPs would provide. The average EP utilization rate, if you look out there and not too far, you find this, is between 0.5% to 3% of people actually using the crisis helplines. Naturally, so because not everyone wants to be in crisis or wants to acknowledge that in crisis, Correct. And then consistently, we do between 20 to 45% of adoption in the first few months of rolling out to a workforce. So that's the same for a 500 account company or 5,000 account company. We consistently show that we can get utilization with workforces in that sense. That's very high. Yeah. And, and we do this through, through a few means, right? I won't get into all of that in the broader details here, but we have a very comprehensive engagement plan of companies to make sure that people don't just get an app pushed out to them. They get engaged to utilize it as well. Um, the other key thing is it's actually well-being improvements, but last but not least, right? Um, a very strong validation point is actually, if you look us up on the Play Store app store, um, we are one of the top rated mental health apps globally. If you check us out on the Play Store, you'll see that there are 90,000 plus five-star reviews on the Google Play Store. Um, same for App Store as well. So that's, that's a strong validation whereby it's not just quantitative, but qualitatively people are reviewing, rating, and finding that it helps them in experiences on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, you've qualified yourself. Now, how about uh, adoption in terms of users and enterprise clients? Uh, who are your big names that are with you right now and what are your numbers like? Yeah, so, so we've got a good range of clients from Fortune 500 companies like Avery Dennison. They are a very large uh, Fortune 500 manufacturing firm. We have companies like Strodis, a large asset management firm. We work with them across the region and we have um, tech unicorns like Foodbanda, Shopback, Carousel that are signed with us as clients as well. So we help these workforces across the region. It's not just one market. We work with them over the regions with multiple languages, uh, multiple offices for them as well. So, so those are some examples of clients we work with um, and a good size of scale of companies taking it on as well. Okay. Now, Theodoric, so one of the key things is you've just raised $3 million Sing dollars in funding. And so obviously, as a corporate customer, I would be comfortable that you know, you've got funding, you're going to be around, you've got some big names in, in, in terms of your, your backers. But if I'm a HR director and I'm looking for employee, employee assistance programs for my company, there's a lot of mental health uh, startups out there right now. It's a hot area because there is a need. Okay, right. it's a real sweet spot. There's a need there. Why should I pick you compared to some of your competitors? That's a great question. So first and foremost, our focus and specialization is in Asia itself. So. There's a few things, right? Going against um, picking a, a, a US type company, um, that's number one versus an Asian focused company. So I'll get to that point in a second. 
Number one is that we're focused on Asia. Number two is this. We don't just have self-guided tools and we don't just have a crisis helpline. What was designed and built in place is a full end-to-end -end mental health support system for employees that may need any form of care. Some people may need clinical care. Some people may need just lightweight journaling, for example. We support no matter where they're in the spectrum. Many tools and vendors and solutions out there cater towards one or the other in that sense, right? And, and it's great in, in that old sense. But we find that typically people range in the spectrum of where they fall in. One week they may feel really bad, one week may feel really great. And this needs deferring support programs to support these deferring varying needs as well. So we provide end-to-end -end care from self guided tools to life coaching to life therapy. That's one, number one. Number two is that we are localized towards an Asian context as well. We don't simply translate our app into different languages. We work with real life um, local mental practitioners to contextualize all the programs we develop for the local market. Someone in Japan gets the whole app contextualized towards them in a native tongue with Japanese coaches, same in Thailand, same in Vietnam, same in Malaysia. So we make sure that it's not built for a, a random like, like audience that is um, general, it's localized towards local cultural context as well. Okay, and that's actually a very big differentiator, I must say. Now, Theodoric, it's been a fascinating conversation with you, but before we end, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to leave us with? Yeah, no, I think, I think um, many things, but one key thing is that a positive trend and one that we believe is here to stay. And for those that are listening as well, I think this thing is key, right? People are the core of every company and a big part of your people's, uh, how they feel, how they think is their personal work, mental well-being. So what this means is that we should start actively thinking a bit more about how people are feeling, not just what they're doing, not just what the output is for us, but whether are we taking care of them? Because fundamentally, if people are taking care well, the output for, for the business, for ourselves, speaks for itself. So mental health is a big trend that's here to stay. It's only going to go grow bigger and bigger, so that's fantastic. Uh, and, and we believe that a lot more companies are going to take this on um, on a local, regional, and global level as well. Now, Theodoric, thank you very much. It's been very interesting, and thanks for taking the time to be on the show. Likewise, Brian. Thank you very much. I'm Brian Fernandez, and we've been speaking to the founder and CEO of Intellect, Theodoric Chu on Vistax Health and Wellness Show. This video will be on our Facebook and LinkedIn sites as well as our website, www.vistax.asia. Please like and subscribe to our various platforms. Thanks a lot for tuning in.